Good day, learners. This is Guillen Danton speaking of Bayesai 1A. Chemistry has been beneficial and a critical source of human innovation for the past thousands of years. It uplifted several aspects of human history and human knowledge. The chemist had been one of the primary contributors in the field of technology, bioscience, medicines, and enterprises such as cosmetics, food science, including human hygiene. Analytical chemistry is the study and application of instruments and methods for separating, identifying, and quantifying matter. Separation, identification, and quantification may be used alone or in combination with other practice methods. In my presentation, I'll be discussing the following contents. The definition, history, problem, use analytical techniques, positive outcomes, and also the other significant information related to my case study. Without any further ado, let me ask you a question. What are your favorite fast food products? Do you love it? Do you want it more to eat it anytime? Well, if yes, do you know those fast food products such as fried chicken, french fries, and burgers contain fatty acids that have enough percent of them to affect your health? Let's dive in deeper by defining what is trans fat means. What is trans fat? The industrial process of hydrogenation in which molecular hydrogen is added to vegetable oil, converting liquid fat to semi-solid fat produces trans fat, also known as trans fatty acid or partially hydrogenated fat. Examples of food that contains high levels of hydrogenated fat are steak mark margarines, fast foods, commercial baked goods such as donuts, cookies and crackers, processed food, and fried foods. In 1890s, French chemist Paul Sabatier discovered that metal catalyst could be used to precipitate hydrogenation reactions. Sabatier, for this discovery concerning catalyst, shared the Nobel 1920 prize for chemistry with French chemist Victor Grignard. In 1901, German chemist Wilhelm Norman experimented with hydrogenation catalyst and successfully induced the hydrogenation of liquid fat, producing semi-solid fat, which came to be known as trans fat. This process, for which Norman received a patent in 1903, was eagerly adopted by food manufacturers. Products containing unsaturated fats were susceptible to rancidity upon exposure to air, resulting in short shelf life. Therefore, a stable form of unsaturated fat had the potential to significantly extend the shelf life and value of variety of foods. The first product developed that contained trans fat was Crisco vegetable shortening, introduced in 1911 by Procter & Gamble Company. In World War II, hydrogenation was important, particularly in the production of margarine, which was used in place of butter when the latter was rationed during World War II. The following decades, the use of hydrogenation to stabilize the shelf life of food production products grew rapidly. In the 1980s, by the 1980s, many food manufacturers and restaurants had stopped using tallow and lard, replacing these fats with trans fat based products, which had similar smoke points and were thought to be healthier. 
Trans fat is considered the worst type of fat you can eat. Unlike other dietary fats, trans fat, also called trans fatty acids, raises your bad cholesterol and also lowers your good cholesterol. A diet laden with trans fat increases your risk of heart disease and leading killer of adults. The more trans fat you eat, the greater the risk of heart and blood vessel disease. Trans fat is so unhealthy that the Food and Drug Administration has recently prohibited food manufacturers from adding in the major source of artificial trans fat to foods and beverages. The FDA expects that this move will prevent thousands of heart attacks and both every year. But as the regulation takes effect, some products with added trans fat may still be available. Doctor worries about added trans fat because it increases the risk for heart attacks, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. Trans fat also has an unhealthy effect on your cholesterol level. leading to possible risk for cardiovascular diseases, breast cancer, affects pregnancy, obesity, as well as stroke. Food free of trans fat are automatically good for you. Food makers may substitute other ingredients for trans fat that may not be healthy either. Some of these Ingredients such as tropical oils, coconut, palm kernel, and palm oils contain a lot of saturated fat. Saturated fat really raises your total cholesterol. In a healthy diet, about 20% to 35% of your total daily calories may come from fat. Try to keep saturated fat at least 10% of your total daily calories. Monounsaturated fat found in olive, peanut, and canola oils is healthier option than is saturated fat. Nuts, fish, and other food containing unsaturated omega-3 fatty acids are other good choices of foods with healthy fats. In this juncture, I'm going to discuss about the analytical techniques used in this case study. First is hydrogenation. Hydrogenation is a process that induces unsaturated fatty acid content of triglycerides by attaching hydrogen atoms at the point of unsaturation in the process of catalyst, usually nickel. And the next is the interestification. It's a chemical reaction that induces the rearrangement of fatty acids within and between triglycerides types of intensification, chemical and enzymatic intensification. Conclusion Chemical and enzymatic intensification have different applications in the food industry from formulation and shortenings, margarines to synthesis of structured lipids for special medical and nutritional application. And now, from the latter part of our presentation, of my presentation, let us behold a short story about trans fat. Partially hydrogenated oil made headlines in 1912 when its inventors won a Nobel Prize in chemistry. Partially hydrogenated oils are the primary source of artificial trans fat and were commonly used in cookies, pies, microwave popcorn, fried chicken, fish sticks, french fries, and a host of other processed and restaurant foods. In the early 1990s, scientists discovered the unique ability of trans fat to raise bad cholesterol and lower good cholesterol, thereby contributing to heart disease. That's why in 1993, the Center for Science and the Public Interest urged the U.S. Food and Drug Administration to label trans fat. 
Then in 2004, we petitioned the FDA to declare that partially hydrogenated oil is unsafe. That same year, we took out a full-page ad in the New York Times, claiming McDonald's for quietly reneging on its promise to stop using partially hydrogenated oils. McDonald's later kept its promise and went trans fat free. It wasn't until 2006 that the FDA required trans fat to be labeled on food packages. Manufacturers raced to get their products to zero grams, which removed a lot of trans fat from the food supply. Later that year, CSPI sued KFC and Burger King for failing to disclose their use of partially hydrogenated oil for frying chicken fries and other foods. Both companies then switched to trans fat free cooking oil. Also in 2006, New York City became the first jurisdiction to ban trans fat in its restaurants and bakeries. Several other cities, counties, and the state of California followed soon after. Long John Silver's announced it would finally become trans fat free in 2013 after we called out their Big Catch meal as the worst restaurant meal in America for having 33 grams of trans fat, 16 times what the American Heart Association recommended as a daily limit. Then in 2015, the Food and Drug Administration finally determined that partially hydrogenated oil is not grass. But not that kind of grass. Grass isn't generally recognized as safe. The food industry was given three years to remove partially hydrogenated oil from the food supply. As of June 18, 2018, food companies are no longer allowed to use partially hydrogenated oils. Harvard School public health researchers estimate that eliminating trans fat will prevent 72,000 to 228,000 heart attacks and save 50,000 lives each year. It took 25 years to turn nutrition science into policy. But with more support from people like you, we can certainly make victories if the trans fat ban happen faster. If you'd like to learn more about our work, don't forget to like us on Facebook, subscribe to our email list, and follow us on Twitter. Thank you so much for taking the time to look at my video. Hopefully my presentation provide you and some useful information. And I'm going to leave a quote. Have no fear of perfection. You never reach it, says a Nobel laureate in chemistry, Marie Curie, a female chemist. Thank you so much for watching and bye.